Hey there, so we're gonna try to do something different. Um, normally when we record an episode of Shaping Fire, um, we just do it audio only. Um, but uh, our friend Leighton Morrison is here today and we just recorded an episode with him and um, it's very true that there is one aspect of, of how uh, the layers of uh, soil, the horizons of the earth, um, really could use a visual graphic. And so Leighton had the great idea of why don't we uh, show you the graphic now and he will walk us through it a little bit. Um, and, then, and then we encourage you, if you have not listened to the podcast episode, go, watch, or go listen to the podcast episode. And if you are here because you already listen to the podcast episode, hopefully this will give you a better understanding of the information that we cover. So Leighton, thank you so much for joining me both on the episode today um, but then also now here in my living room. <laughs> so my pleasure. So um, my pleasure. so I'm gonna go ahead and insert the graphic here. Okay. And why don't you go ahead and explain um, the and the important intricacies that maybe uh, were more difficult without looking at the graphic itself. Perfect. Um, you know, it's interesting. You know, the cannabis industry as a whole has has looked at solely the O horizon, the top. The O horizon. The O horizon. It's O stands for organic. And, you know, everything has been focused on getting a matrix or a system that will allow fast rooting and for nutrients to be absorbed and obviously pulled up by the plant. And so in that regard, it makes sense that you use a pure organic matter like a peat moss or a cocoa core or any of these other growing mediums. But the interesting thing <clears throat> is is that that works great with nutrients, but as soon as you go into a living soil system or an organic regenerative type of farming system, it does not work because the organic matter has a couple issues. Number one, it goes hydrophobic, which means that it will not absorb water, and it goes anaerobic on the inside. So it's a double negative. So this is why I try to explain to people that if you're going to go regenerative organic, you need to consider all the horizons, just like the soil, just like Mother Nature, Gaia did, uh, in creating these um, different layers that provide different things. Um, we're going to start with the O horizon. Generally speaking, in these diagrams, you'll see it's very small. It's a very tiny layer. It can only be an inch, you know, half an inch deep in a lot of cases. Um, in the most productive and fertile soils on the planet, which is, I love this question. What do you think the most fertile soil is on this planet? I would probably say the Amazon. Right, the rainforest, right? Right. Wrong. Oh. The, the top soil, the O horizon is very small there. It's, it's just maybe an inch or two. Actually, it's the prairies in the mm. Midwest because you'll have the O horizon as deep as 20, 30 feet. Um, we'll get into soil trans, uh, tr um, <clears throat> uh, construction in, in the podcast, but for right now, I want you to think about, okay, well, the O horizon's very deep. How do I drain that? How do I prevent that from going hydrophobic? Um, that's where those other layers, what's called the A horizon and the B horizon come in. And then you'll also have sometimes the E horizon, which is the alluvial layer. That'll generally happen in old drainage areas, old riverbeds. Um, that's where you're gonna get a concentration of an E layer. So typically it's just the O horizon, the A horizon, and the B horizon. The B horizon is going to tend to be more mineral rich, which makes sense because the plants, you know, they send their tap roots down and they're going to be able to absorb those um, clay particles and the, and the high mineral concentrations that exist inside the clay um, through their biosphere and through the network of organisms. <clears throat> now, the A horizon, in my mind, is the most important for cannabis growers because that's going to pull excess moisture out of the O horizon. So that's going to prevent them from going anaerobic. So it literally acts like a wicking system. So think of it as pulling the moisture away, excess moisture away from the plant, mm -hmm. um, away, pulling it out of that O horizon, which is holding it like a sponge. So it's actually gonna help in transpiration, which means providing oxygen down into the soil roots for the organisms and also pushing the CO2 out for the plant. So, so I, you're using um, vocabulary that we use to describe the horizons of the earth you know how 
topsoil. The top, skin, top, the top, skin. Top, top, thank you. Thank you. Could call it the skin of the earth. But you're, but you're, but now you're making. I, I think that you're making this transition to talking about how we're layering our pots. Mm -hmm. So, are you suggesting that instead of us taking our soil and just mixing it all together, you actually are going to lay one layer down and lay another layer down and then lay another layer down? Is that the idea? Absolutely. It's called biomimicry. Just okay. copying nature. Um, it's very easy to do. Um, when I work with clients, uh, generally speaking, is I will have a few different horizons blended for them. Usually I'll use an E horizon or alluvial layers for drainage underneath, and I'll use an A horizon, and then, a, and then an organic matter, a deep organic mat, an O horizon. Okay. So basically it's just three horizons. A bottom horizon, generally speaking, I'll just take uh, rocks, three quarter inch rocks, one inch rocks, whatever. And I'll blend in some coarse sand. So I'll, I'll pack the rocks down and then I'll put a layer of sand over the top of it. The reason I use the sand is it's similar uh, as a sand filter system. Um, we use it in aquatics, uh, equal, <laughs> aquatic ecosystems um, to actually filter out the fine particulate. So in this case, it's reverse. We're protecting the soils from migrating the fines out because we don't want those fines to come out of the soil every time we water it. So we trap them on the, on the sand. At the bottom, layer, yeah. Right, on the sand layer. So the roots can still go down, migrate, or um, pull out the minerals and nutrients from those fines. And we're never gonna get an anaerobic layer, which is huge. Because if you have an anaerobic layer, the roots go down to that anaerobic layer. They go down layer, to die. And they die. And then now they, the, the, the alcohol actually melts the tip of the root. And that plant cannot heal that root. That's done. So you, you're never going to hit plant potential if your roots are hitting anaerobic zones. So that's why it's so critical, this drainage. So then we have the A horizon, which is again going to have a higher content of sand, so it's protecting the O horizon from losing its nutrients and its fines from migrating down and plugging up the whole system. So that's why each one of these layers is so critical and should be taken into consideration, especially if you're doing pots. All right, so um, what else um, is in this graphic um, that you want to point out before we just um, wrap this up and, and send people off to the podcast. What should they be? What what should they be seeing when they're looking at the graphic? I think the most important thing is um, is for them to wrap their mind around the fact that this is layered and it's layered for a reason and it works and functions correctly and effectively because it's layered. So when you dig a hole next in your backyard, look for those layers and and, and you know get into it and notice the color change. Pick up those soils and rub them in your fingers and, and feel them and you'll see the difference in texture. A uh, gentleman that I'm working with uh, on spent soils, which is a big issue with cannabis growers. And he's, you know, I love it. He's like, I'm trying to be good about this. I have mountains of the spent soil. What can I do with it? I'm like, all right, let's start with basics. Let's add a little bit of sand to it. And I want you to put it in a cup, drill some holes in the bottom and watch the water move through it. And do the same with, without not adding the sand. So he started playing around with that and he was like, oh my God, this, this is totally different. It feels gritty. Um, it's draining better. Um, I don't have, it doesn't get smelly. And I'm like, see this, you know, just by adding that little bit of sand to that O horizon or that spent soil, you're, you're getting it to function better. So when you're considering building soils, you got to think about the function of it. How do I get water to move through it without turning anaerobic? How do I prevent anaerobic layers? And all of that happens naturally in nature through these layerings, right on. Through, through using the layers to, to separate and, and to hold and protect from, from uh, too many mi fines migrating into the deeper lower levels. Right on, good point. So, so the graphic that you've been seeing, this is essentially what started this episode that Leighton and I are, are recording um, because I saw this at the Regenerative Agriculture Conference that, that he and Joshua Rutherford put together. And, um, and when I saw it, and, and he's suggesting that this is how we should be building our pots, like my mind was blown, right? Because I'm all like, you know, oh, we take our soil, we, we mix, mix the soil, we put it in, and then we do some sort of green mulch, right? So that's like pretty basic stuff. But the idea that I actually should be making, you know, three or five mixes and then pouring them in order um, I think that's a new way for us all to grow as farmers so that we can be growing 
uh, the most thriving quality plans. Mm -hmm. So, so if this is new for you, like it is for me, I encourage you to go and check out the uh, the new podcast episode out today, the same day I'm uh, publishing this video uh, with Leighton Morrison, and listen to that. It's going to be a long, long form uh, <laughs> explanation of this. Um, but then also, this video is here so that everybody can check out this graphic that we'll be referring to a lot in the podcast. Thank so, you. can I just add one more yeah, thing? Um, you know, I think it's important for you to understand that. This technique is for using it forever. In other words, you're not replacing this. You're just cutting the plant and you're leaving the soil alone. This is a long-term functioning pot. And part of this is because we're trying to establish that mycorrhizae network, which takes 90 days to get going. So that's about the time you're harvesting your plant. So this way you can harvest your plant, you can save your pot, you can save the mycorrhizae, uh, that's, and the entire rhyosphere is intact, ready to go for your next plant, and you're not dumping it. This is, this is a permanent constructed soil that can be re reused over and over and over again for your entire life. Yeah, this is best practices for no-till. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Thanks for yeah. coming, right, brother. Thank right you, on. man. Cool. Good Thanks. to see you. Right on.